What's good? It's your man Zobi One Kenobi with Nomad Hoops, yo. I got another banger, yo. This one right here is gonna be legendary for the books, yo. I got my man Aaron Maxi, bro. If you don't know who that is, yo, E Money, yo, from LA. You know what I'm saying? Representing the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? And this right here, look, 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 look. I've had plenty of guys come on this show, you know, in, in, in the previous episodes, right? And I'm big fans of all of them. But this one right here, yo, is legendary to me, you know, to me personally, man. It let me know what hard basketball really, really was, you know. So don't get it. Don't, don't, once I, I tell y'all this all the time, Zobi One Kenobi gets buckets. I'm all about getting buckets. But these are a different type of buckets, man. If you ever watch this DVD, this right here, this man right here, Aaron Maxey, this is who we talking to today, man. What's good, Aaron? Hey, everything's great. Thanks for having me, Zo. Man, yo, yo, man, what's, what's, what's good, man? Where you, where you at right now? I mean, right now, I'm in uh, the Shenzhen area of China. Uh, been, been over here for like the last kind of three years. Uh, with with my time here, you know, I've been living in Beijing, Hong Kong, uh, playing professionally in the a ABL for the uh, Taiwanese team. So, I mean, I'm still, you know, bouncing, still active, you know, still doing my thing. Yo, man, you've been hooping for a minute, man. I mean, like, we all balling, too, or whatnot, man. But you basically like Vince Carter out here, yo. Hey, I'll put it to you like this. Vince was my counselor at All-American Camp. So, that, that should what? tell you, back in high school, yeah, back in 95, or excuse me, 96, at Nike All-American Camp, he is one of my counselors with uh, the big bro, Keith Kloss, who's, you know, one of my OGs from L.A., uh, Miles Simon, you know, another one of my OGs, and then uh, we also had Tim Duncan, who was there. Really? He was in camp there at yeah. the time? Yeah. No, he was actually one of the counselors, so, you know, uh, Keith, Miles, uh, Tim Duncan, Vince, they were all counselors there. Um, you know, I'm th two and a half, three years younger than all of them. Okay, 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 oh, okay. We got a uh, who's this? Yo, okay, this is a uh, empowering patients LLC. <laughs> You're here to get schooled by Aaron, and they gave you the hand claps, yo. So you know, nah, that's that's actually what that's one of my friends right there. Yeah, you know, that's uh, you know, I got Crohn's disease. Yeah, you know, that's my Crohn's guru. Yo, okay. so, uh, you know, that's one of the things, you know, you know, she she definitely looks out for the community, all that good stuff. So, I mean, on on top of hooping. You know, within the last five years, you know, I've also come down with uh, Crohn's disease and I go ahead and try to, um, you know, advocate, you know, as well. So, you know, not only hooping, it's also the you know, knowledge side of things on health. And I mean, whenever I have questions, you know, I definitely, you know, ask, ask her because, um, you know, she knows a lot about the disease, helps a lot of people out. You know, it's all good. OK, well, look, let's do this right quick, man, because I know I know my late mother in law, you know, she had, you know, she had Crohn's and whatnot also. But, um, you know, if you can if you can, you know, educate a little bit and put us on game, you know, let us know what, what, yeah. what Crohn's disease actually is. Yeah. So Crohn's disease is a uh, genetic um, uh, autoimmune disease that happens to be within your uh, digestive tract. So anywhere from literally the back of your throat, if you stuck a finger and hit the back of your throat or you took your finger and literally shoved it up your rear end. That's basically any of the active areas where you can actually have Crohn's disease. So that that's the simplest way uh, for me to describe it. And, um, you know, just in general, you know, people can go ahead and have any type of, um, you know, problems where it's kind of internal ulcers, um, you know, swelling, you know, people having, you know, diarrhea stuff can get, you know, much worse where, you know, intestines can be, you know, taken out, you know, things like that. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a part of life, you know, and as you know, Knowledge and information is key and having, you know, the, the internet workout and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, this is really, you know, a great thing to be able to, to have because, you know, we can reach out to people, get information and, you know, help one another out. No, definitely, man. Definitely. Um, uh, to, to your uh, to, to your partner, you know, your, your friend or whatnot, you know, I I'd definitely be uh, interested in grabbing some of that information um, about mm -hmm. the, about Crohn's because, you know, they didn't. They didn't know that obviously my mother in law, you know, had it. Right, um, right. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely definitely interested in in you know helping get the word out and, and pushing that because right. I mean it, it is important because there's people out there living with it. And uh, I remember I didn't know much about it, but I remember she would always talk about uh, you know acid reflux. And, yeah, and, uh, yeah. You know, and I, it didn't really you know I didn't really understand too much, but you know she didn't really do spicy foods because it would you know, trigger off right. like, acid reflux and things like that. So it, it, yeah. it, it, it didn't make sense. But now that I'm older, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I get it. 
I get it. Right. But, um, let's uh let's switch let's switch gears right quick, man. Um, yeah. So, so you are you okay? So you're a Nike Battleground King, a one on one Battleground King. Um, yes. Were you the first Nike Battleground King? Um, the way that it started was the year previous to the DVD that you have. Mm-hmm. There was actually just uh, there was a tournament, so you had one in LA and one in New York. So Mike Campbell, shout out Mike Campbell, um, he won in two thousand two, and then I had one out in LA. And uh, my man Young Kim, actually, he's the one of the uh, producers. He's staying over in Hong Kong. Just saw him a couple months ago. You know, great guy. Um, he went ahead and he was there, just basically kind of doing a, a demo snippet thing that was um, you know put together for Nike. And Nike went ahead and took the two tournaments that had gone on because it was really just uh, an experimental thing because they were looking to compete with uh, Reebok's RBK and uh, and one was really starting to you know pick up steam and, and whatnot with their um, you know because I want to say 2003 was their uh, was the first year that they started doing the mixtape tour. That's the mixtape tour. Yep, I remember that. Right, right. So all this stuff was leading up to that 2003 year. And Magic Johnson, if you remember, he had the uh, the kind of street ball, round ball thing that was game. on MTV as well. Game. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So all that stuff was going on. So this was Nike's way of being able to try to combat and have something that was a little bit different to those other products that were out there. So going into 2003, they went ahead, did both L.A. and New York, and then they also added the other cities, which were Chicago, Philly, Toronto, and, uh, and D.C., so once they did that and and they just basically like young, I mean, he, he's a dope, super dope, um, you know, just producer on stuff. He just let the camera run. That's so it, it was actually some, it, right, yeah. right. So, you know, the battlegrounds was supposed to be basically kind of like a 10, 12 episode type show that was supposed to air, you know, things got lost, you know, uh, between, I guess, Nike and the production company. So then they just had to go ahead and shrink it down to 90 minutes. What? Yo, man, somebody, yeah. somebody out there, look, I'm going to put this out here right quick. Somebody out there that either worked for Nike at the time or, or, or you know, still work with them, they, people lose footage, but they don't lose footage. Man. Like, like I said, t- I'm, I'm not going to get into my actual full profession or whatever, but in cybersecurity, bro, <laughs> like, like, look, man, hey, hey, people say that they lose stuff all the time, but believe me, look. we know where it's at. Somebody yeah, sitting at my parents' that. house. Exactly. We, that's exactly where it is. Because I mean, because it, it was crazy. Because my younger brother was with me. Shout out, Chris. But um, you know, it's one of those things. You know, we just went ahead and used you know my um, you know video camera, and we just literally recorded everything that we were doing. And so Chris didn't come out um, until uh, I want to say it was that Friday because he flew out with uh, Mo Spiller's um, best friend. Shout out the big homie OG Mo Spills Yo, Mo from Spiller, LA, Super buckets, OG. Bro. I know. Yeah. Right? Oh, he's. Oh, he still gets buckets. You know, he plays in the uh, senior, the forty and up uh, Drew League. So oh, most so still is. gets buckets. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, his best friend Queen, you know, she came out and um, you know, and she's cool with the family and everything else. She came out with my my little brother, and you know, at that point, you know, we had already filmed so much. So once Chris got out there, he took over the camera duties and just kept filming. So from that point on, it was basically kind of the prep going into Saturday. And then, you know, when we were rained out, you know, it was just kind of hanging out. We didn't know what was going to go on. And then that Monday, they decided we're going to move to the soundstage and go ahead and, you know, finish everything off. Man, that's dope, man. Like, you dropping legendary knowledge that nobody knows. Look, I'm going to tell you this right here, man. Like, you know you about to get calls for anybody that sees this. <laughs> and to be like, you have what? Hey, look, man. Look, I ain't even got to say it, bro. Just, 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 hey, hey which, which way is it going? This way. Because on my, on my screen, yeah, it's go- <laughs> hey, hey, no mad hoops, yo. You right. heard it here first. Stop playing. <laughs> right. Man, crazy, right. Man. Yeah, exactly. But, but you know what? That, 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 during that time and during that era, man, that was the point when everybody had camcorders on them at that time. And you remember, like, right. you know, we, weren't, we weren't out there with the phones yet still. So, right. Everybody out here, like, do, 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 you know, like trying to, trying to catch the yeah. footage or whatever. And then, and then on top of that, it was like this because everybody didn't have the fold out screen. So everybody wouldn't even. Oh, right. Man. Right. And that was the thing. I had the fold out screen because I, I specifically bought my my camera because I'd played over in Finland the year before. And it was one of those things where, you know, agents are always telling you, you got to have fresh video, all that kind of stuff. So I deliberately went out, bought my video camera so that I could go ahead and film my games. So then that way, you know, going off that next year, you know, I could get a job. 
because uh, after the Battlegrounds, I played in the D League, or and now the G League, as everybody knows it as. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which um which team did you play for in the uh in the G League? I mean in the D League. I played for uh, the Columbus River Dragons, and um, it yeah, was. Oh, you uh, played? Yeah, you played when it first started up because because uh, yeah. I'm from Fayetteville. You played when the okay. Fayetteville Patriots existed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, I was playing man. when uh you know when Capel was playing and they had big uh, Ernest Brown and all those guys. You well, you know what's funny? You talking about Capel? Well, I played. I used to play ball and get. Well, I'm, I'm still real good friends with their cousin, uh, uh, Julian Capel. Because okay. you know it's a lot of them, man. They like the Wayans, bro. Right. Capels right, like right. the Wayans. It's yeah. Jeff, Jason, yeah. Julian. Right. It's, it's 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 a lot of them, bro. And um, I yeah. even saw I even saw a little a little Capel uh, last weekend at a basketball oh, wow. camp. Yeah, like he was only like wow. He's got to be like twelve, maybe ten, twelve. Big boy. Okay. Yeah, they and they all yeah. tall, all of them. Right. You know. So uh, right. But yeah, man. Um. Golly, yo, like uh. So, so one of the things I want to do right quick is uh, because you know you got a lot of history and I don't want to hold you too long, man. But uh, because we got a big time difference, I know, I know it's still you know it's early in the morning over that way, man. It's it's not for those who don't uh, I know. Got, hey, I I went ahead, I blocked out time for you, so take as much time as you want. Oh man, you know, man, I'm I'm honored and I, I greatly appreciate that, man. I really do, man. Uh, but look, man, this is what I want to do, man. I know we've been talking for for a minute here. What I want to do here is uh, you know, you mentioned. Uh, you know, you playing overseas and uh, in, in the ABL also. And uh, oh, no, no, that's that's what I wanted to say right quick. So you said you played for the uh, what, was, what was the name of the team in the G League? I mean, the D League, uh, the what, drag, what Dragons? I played for the Columbus River Dragons. So Jeff Columbus. Malone, he was actually my coach. You know, Jeff Malone from you know, the Utah Day shooting off, you know, one foot, you know, all that good stuff. So he was, you know, my coach um, with that. And, you know, Junie, he played in the D League at that time as well. So, I mean, everybody who played in the battlegrounds, you know, it wasn't, you know, just some random guys. Everybody played pro ball. Um, you know, I just saw P Mac, you know, Paul McPherson uh, back in uh, last December. Shout out P Mac. I know because, you know, he's doing big three right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. See, I went to the first season yeah. of the big three or whatnot, but I haven't been, you know, at all this year. And they, and they just had, uh, I think they came to Charlotte during Father's Day. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we so. were here, out here in Charlotte, uh, North mm-hmm. Carolina, or whatnot. Um, I don't know if you saw this on my IG or not, but um, in 2007, uh, I played for uh, I played for the Iowa Energy uh, in the yeah, in I the did G see that, and and yeah, uh, for summer league or whatnot. And uh, in this in this photo right here is yeah. Nick Nurse. So I, I see that. For, yeah. So now I can tell people I okay. played for a NBA championship coach. <laughs> right. Right. No, that's you huge, know? man. So, yeah. I mean, because that was his first year, too. That was his first year coaching. The okay. League. I mean, God, gotcha. at least. Gotcha. I'm so used to saying the G League now, man, the D League. Right. Right. Or whatever. Right. But, uh, but yeah. But look, man, look, this ain't about me. Everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm on here all the time. So everybody sees me. So uh, <laughs> look, I want to pull up some of this footage, man. I got this video over here. Uh you know, hold on, hold on. First, okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me back up right quick because I don't want to. I want to make sure I give all, all props because this definitely looks like it's coming from the ABL. So, okay, you know, I want to want to make sure they get they get all their all their props and uh, just so everybody know, uh, Zobi One Kenobi and Nomad Hoops does not get any proceeds on this channel currently right now. So, you know, I'm doing this because I want to do this. And I'm not doing it for the money. I ain't doing it for any of that. Like I said, I got a nine to five. I'm happy with it. I'm able to do this because this is what I want to do. This is how I stay connected to basketball when I'm not hooping. I'm always in the game. But um, so I got this muted. So we're able to still converse while it's playing and people could just kind of mm-hmm. see it. Um, I don't know if you can really see it that well or not, but, um, you know, you can point out anything you see. Matter of fact. In this I mean, first play, I'll oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, you know, uh, the the Dreamers they went ahead and they, uh, you know, called me up and they brought me in, you know, for a game and you know, for myself. I mean, I knew it was just an opportunity to, to be able to get out there and to show people what I can do. Um, you know, the full game is uh, on YouTube, but it was one of those things. You know, they kept making a big deal about the fact. You know, I was 39 at the time. It's just like you know, age or not, you know, people can go ahead and hand out them buckets. You were 39 and that's something right here. That, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this was, you know, no little feet, just going out there, you know, just a regular day of, you know, just hoops. <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's what it is. I mean, I literally came in at 3 a.m., you know, with the squad. Wow. 
See, I mean, yeah. that's that's the thing, man. Like, like you're six six, like what six six two what two two fifteen two, what? Yeah, two twenty two fifteen. Like, like so. I'm six six. I'm six six. Like two hundred. Cause I want. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't get in the weight room no more. I need to. Cause I'm sitting gotcha. here looking at this and I'm like, yo, like I got this dude. Like in my head, I'm like, yo, I got this man by by six years. I can get big right quick, and I know I can give him these buckets. It's like I, I just right. gotta try them, yo. I gotta try them. But uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. But that spin move, bro. Your spin move from um from the from the middle of the lane going to the yeah. going to the left, bro. Dog, man, you keep your elbow so squared, bro. Like I just I don't want none of that action, none of that action in the face, bro. That's that's head level. I don't. <laughs> right. I mean, like it's, right. it's legit, but that's what you're taught. You know, I was taught the same thing. You know, yeah. you face square, go straight right. up. You know, I but mean, I, and, that's, and that's something that, you know, they don't teach anymore. I mean, I, you know, people call me old school, stuff like that. But I mean, everything that I do, you know, one, two dribble, pull up, um, you know, stand square to the hoop, you know, using your body. I mean, all the stuff that, you know, we grew up on. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I really don't feel like that's really being taught in the game anymore. Everybody's, you know, so much about, you know, trying to take so many extra dribbles and doing all this other stuff. And it's all about being efficient. Right. Right. Cause I mean, like, yeah, that's that's what that's what everybody's doing right now is just, um, you know, combo moves and uh, right. you, know, you know, you got all these trainers or whatnot. You know, shout out to all the trainers that are out there that you know, right, right, that I that I know or whatnot. You know, I don't I don't knock the hustle. You know, and and they understand. Of they came up on they came up on the same thing that we did, but they they're younger younger than me, and they're right. obviously younger than you. But you know, they came up in a point where they were able to grasp. Uh, a certain a certain skill set and style to be able to do it, right? You know, right. It's like taking someone that's a professional. It's it's like taking somebody that's been playing basketball their whole life and then tell them to travel intentionally. Yeah, right. You know, right. That's like exactly what it is. It's like, it, it, like it don't feel yeah. right at all. It's like I can't like one two like like one two three like you know like I I can't take I can't take any more after that. You know, so oh we lost them. Got to get them back. Got to get them back. Let's see what we can do. Hold on here. Try to hit uh try to hit him back and try to get him to jump back on. I think his connection went down. But that's not a problem. Um is we will try to get him back up here. Give me a moment. You know, these things happen sometimes. You know, sometimes the connection go bad on the other side. I mean, this is the first time I had that happen in the podcast right now, but you know, ain't no biggie. We'll get them back in here. <laughs> okay, so so uh, LLC, what is what, what name should I call you? Because that's funny. Uh, in the chat, uh, she says um, she says welcome to China. Welcome to China's connection. He'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, oh, you back? You, okay. We, now you good? You good? We, we we're over here having some fun. I'm having fun with yeah, uh, that with yeah that that's the with Allison. Okay. Yeah, I'm over yeah, here having fun. I mean, with it's Allison just it's one of those things. Yeah, it's one of those things that just happens over here. I mean, calls get dropped on a regular basis. I mean, regardless of you know who I talk to, you know things get dropped out. So I mean, everybody knows. Well, that's like I told you when I was, I told you I was in Iraq in 2009 and, uh, you know, it was just, just, that's just what happens, you know, like the connection right. up and the connection drops and uh, it is what it is. But um, I hear, I hear that you're, um, you're called Marlon Wayans, Wayans uh, often or whatnot. And, and, I, and I know that was probably referred back to when I was talking about the, uh, about the Caples being uh, like the Wayans. Right. So many of them. Now, why, why is the Allison calls you, <laughs> calls you Marlon Wayans? You must be hilarious. Because she. Because she got jokes, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, look, that's all look that before, is. Look before it drops off again. Okay, so we watch. Nah, we're, we're, we should be good. We should be good. Oh, I mean, hey, yeah. look, man, look, dr, bro, disaster recovery. Hey, look, I know, I know, been there, done that. That's right. That's right, man. We we did. We had a little bit improv impro- uh, improvising over here, man. So it was cool, man. It wasn't no biggie. Um, now what I'm gonna do right here. Is I'm gonna pull up this screen, and uh, it's gonna have these photos on it, and and the photos on the screen will be obviously you, 
And uh, you let me know if you can really see them that well or not without me having okay. to click on them. Because I don't want to uh, click on them so much and, uh, yeah, you know, mess around and get a copyright or whatever. Because this is different. This is from a Google right. search. So, gotcha. You know. Okay. Right, here we go. Um, it's, it's probably with all of these. This is the first year of the Nike Battlegrounds. Uh -huh. So all of that, for the most part, you know, now I, I actually have all of those you know, at my house, all those mm -hmm. pictures. So but that was the very first year. Um, you know, the guy in the purple, that's my man, uh, Smoking Joe Smith. You know, he had played uh, right you know, down in Brazil for a handful of years. Yeah, he also played over in Italy, doing a lot of training right now out of the uh, St. Louis area. You know, just, just a gamer right there. So, I mean, Joe, he's doing big things. Um, of course, that's John Sally. Uh, we know number one, you know, hype man to everybody, you know, in the league. You know, he has, you know, his six rings with everybody. You, but, know, um, you know something, you know, something John about Sally. That. Something about John Sally. John Sally, John Sally is uh is um uh, one of my cousin's uncles or whatnot. He's like a oh cool. Like down the line, like I've never met him personally, but like down the okay. line, because uh, my family's from DC, but I have a, a section of family that's you know how somebody is from somewhere, but then another part of yeah. the family is like located up in like somewhere else. So they're from like New York. And yeah, um, yeah. However that works. I don't know how that works or whatever, but been, I've been told this like my whole life growing up and I have yet to meet him or whatever. So it's, it is what it is, but you know, you got it. Cause he is definitely like the super hype man. And I would definitely like grill him about like where he's from and a thousand questions. And they'd be like, mm -hmm. yo, like, you know, everybody says, do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know this person? And they'd be right. like, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah. So no, nah, I mean, yeah. John, you know, really, really cool guy. You know, he was the uh, the host for for the first two years of the Battlegrounds. Um, you know, it got to the point where, you know, there, with the, the commuting that I was doing with, with stuff with Nike, I'd bump into him in the airports, you know, all that kind of stuff, Nike events. But, uh, you know, just a, a really, really good guy. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have anything, you know, bad to say about John other than the fact that, I mean, he's just a, a book and a wealth of knowledge. So, I mean, mm -hmm. when you get an opportunity to, you know, really kick it with him, I mean, it's going to be a lot of jokes. And at the same time, just a lot of great stories. So, I mean, definitely, you know, good guy. That's dope, man. That's dope for real. Because, I mean, that's that's what that's what you really want to hear, man. You just really want to hear the stories. Like, uh, I got a question for you. So, I'm looking at this photo yep. down. I'm looking at this photo down here. And, obviously, I see the vintage, the vintage uh, Venice. I'm wilding. Yep. <laughs> I see the Venice beat yep. uh, courts or whatnot. Have, when's the last time? Have you ever played in the VBL? The VBL started um, like later on. I want to say it was two. Th yeah, it was like 2006. My last year playing in the uh, five on five battlegrounds at Venice Beach was 2005. And then uh, like my parents went ahead and retired and they had relocated from uh, from SoCal to you know the Georgia area. And, uh, you know, that was my last year living out there before I had moved moved out to Georgia as well. But um, as far whoa, as most of the guys wait, from the VBL. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, Whoa, I'm uh -huh. cutting you off. Wait uh -huh. a minute, you live on the East Coast now again. I mean, basically, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm you, down in uh, the Atlanta come, area. Whenever you come back to the states, you come to the yo, man, you know, yeah, I gotta make sure you got like you know, you got to hit me, bro. Just be like, yo, so oh, yeah, I'm, I'm back, and I'm gonna be like, bet, like, yeah, I'm coming down, yo. Matter of fact, I'm be down yeah. there in um, in August, I'm be down there in August, no, okay. I'm sorry, September. I got a, I got a buddy, man. Shout out to my man, Adrian, man. Congratulations, he's gonna be getting married. That's my man, yo. Uh, okay. Military brats, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it's but you know, gotcha. Another time. right, yeah, man. Let me let me switch this off and bring it back to us. Well, go ahead, yeah. So, I mean, you know, as far as with that, you know, went ahead, relocated to uh, you know, ATL, and you know, we're out there. So, I mean, my uh, you know, my whole family, you know, older brother, you know, his family, younger brother, his family, you know, everybody went ahead and you know, moved out to uh, you know, the Georgia area. Yeah, man, I was I was born in Georgia because I'm a military. Oh, nice, kid. yeah, I was born, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you know, I mean, that's dope, man. Um, shoot, uh, okay, so let me ask you this, man, when you were playing, oh man, okay, 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 when you were playing. In the Nike Battleground. Yep. What or who? Who do you say was the toughest individual that the, the toughest three people that you played? No particular order. The toughest three people that you played to become the king. 
I mean, because you, you play. Okay, wait, wait. Now let's. It, let, it, nah, hold on, hold on. Let me change that whole thing up. Because okay. you play, you play in the world um, battleground also in two thousand four. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, you might want to turn your light on in your room. You look like you're getting. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, it's anyway, you storming it. out here. Yeah, that's what I figured. I was gonna say, man, it's early, man. I was like, it was just super bright. It's like, it's yeah, like faking me nah, out. This man, is... you must be over here on the east coast. Nah, it's uh regular, just kind of summer weather here. Because I mean, it's okay. uh, getting ready for like typhoon season. So oh. I mean, rain just you know pops up and it'll bucket down for a while and clear up. And some days it just kind of rains all day. But that's you know summer stuff here. All right. Well, so right, so you know that. To, so to answer your question, as far as you know, the toughest guys. Um, number one, the the rules for the U.S. battlegrounds. You know, it was gritty. Unless, you know, somebody literally had their head decapitated, they really weren't calling too many fouls, as, as you know. Yeah, you know, when we got yeah, to, to, the, to the world, when we started doing the world stuff, started getting a bit ticky-tacky, you know, that's a whole nother, you know, story with that. But as far as for, you know, myself, I mean, you know, I mean, whether it was, you know, Hugh Jones, Baby Shaq, you know, shout out to, you mm-hmm. know, Hugh Jones, he's still hooping. Yes, um, he you know, P-Mac, you know, June, I mean, they, you know, they were just all different, tough, gritty competitors. And then even the year before, you know, out in L.A., I mean, whether, you know, I was playing against Zach Frey, you know, Zach, I know he's still doing things. Um, you know, shout out to Zach, you know, Smoke and Joe, um, you know, as well, you know, being out there. You know, it was just it was just really a different um, game. And on top of that, you really didn't know what to expect. You know, getting to the, the world situation, um, you know, there was a little more kind of glamour to it. The grittiness wasn't, you know, what it was the f- first two years. And, you know, things change, you know, things happen, and, you know, that, that's it. But, you know, I'd definitely say, you know, the last three guys in the, uh, in the competition, you know, between, you know, Baby Shaq, you know, P-Mac, and June, I mean, those were the, you know, the toughest guys that, you know, I went ahead and faced. Man, them, them, them dudes are tough, man. And I, I know, I mean, I obviously – you know, I know about P Mac, I know about Junie, and I know about Baby Shaq. I know about Hugh, Hugh Jones mm-hmm. or whatnot. But a quick story about Hugh Jones. Um, I know he don't like 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 I played, I played, I was like a call up in like and one thing. You know, gotcha. so I go to certain states and certain people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, some yeah. People, I know yep. somebody yeah, they yeah, always know. call that person. And sometimes you get to play with them, and then sometimes you might end up playing right. against them or whatever. Well, before I even made it to that level. I had, you know, I basically, I, I made it to, in the building in 2005, in Charlotte okay. or whatever. I was cut. I was cut in Raleigh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And then two days later, mm-hmm. you know, I got picked up in in Charlotte, right. North Carolina or whatever. A lot of people don't know that I got mm-hmm. cut first, but, you know, I'm here. Uh, but when I got in the building, yo, you know, I was out there and I remember somebody shot a shot. They missed it. The rebound was caught on, on the, on the, uh on the return they kicked it out i remember baby shack running down to crash the boards all of us was down to crash the boards and you know the ball was a long rebound and you know i turned around everybody's you know like taking off and i'm like right there on the dotted line you know free throw line free throw line dotted line yeah and right. baby shack runs by he runs by me and i swear he stops and like shoulder checks me like Dead in my chest. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know why. I mean, like, I'm nowhere near the ball. The ball is already gone. Like, he shoulder checks me, and I hit the ground, and I swear, from the dotted line, I went from the dotted line to under the goal to the um to Oh, the yeah. Post, man. It was like, it was like a, um, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a TV show, man. Like a stunt, man. Like, something right. just, like, pulled me back, like, instantly. And, you know, yeah. like, man, this dude's trying to embarrass me on TV. Well, if it was on there, it was it wasn't no trying. That was definitely embarrassing. Because uh, <laughs> right. I mean, like I've never been hit like that. Like not not you know right. not 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 knowing that you know there's going to be contact. You know when he did it, it was yeah. like, boom! I remember him charging up the yeah. gate, and then you know he just went on about his business. Uh, shout out to you, baby right. Shaq, man. You know you still you still my guy. You know what I mean? Representing DC. You know right. you out there. I see you, boy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I definitely would love to tell him that personally, and he'll probably laugh about it. I mean, obviously, if I hit somebody and they was cool with it, I would laugh too. 
Uh, but right. uh, but yeah, man, well, uh, it's it's a part of the game because that that's part of his go to move. Because you know, know the very the very first uh, you know play in the battlegrounds, you know he went ahead and did the same thing to me. Mm-hmm. But you know I went ahead took that in the chest, and you know I know as far as with that, I think he was a little bit surprised that you know I was able to take it because you know when we were working out like the day before, two days before, you know he went ahead did that same move you know to a couple of guys. And yo, know, that with what you described, that's exactly what happened to them. See, you know, see, I mean, okay, he's okay, a tank. So I feel he's a he's a tank. Feel better about yeah. it, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's one of his moves, yo, know, because he goes through people. Right. And you know, I just attribute it to you know my Big East days, mm-hmm. you know, being able to take hits like that. Because I mean, you know, when I played, you know, college ball, they still allowed the forearm in the lane and all that kind of stuff. So everybody's getting mm-hmm. checked on a regular basis. So you know, being able to take that initial blow. Like I said, it, it wasn't, you know, anything big to me. Mm-hmm. It was just, you know, this is just a part of the game. I'm, you know, getting everybody's, you know, trying to figure out, you know, on the spot playing, all right, what do they like to do? What don't they like to do? And just trying to, you know, really calculate how, you know, the game needs to be played. But I knew he liked, you know, using his size, using his strength. I mean, he, he's definitely a bull. I know he's still a bull. But, yeah. you know, knowing how to, you know, take those, you know, those impact, you know, kind of impactful hits. And that's what you got to be able to do. And that's what it yeah. was, you know, playing him. See, and I wasn't expecting that because I really haven't ran into many players. I, I didn't run into any players that was built like that, you know, coming right. up. Right. Um, right. So, so that's you know the, the first time I ever played anybody from from the West Coast was uh was my man Nick. Um, he he runs the VBL, you know. Okay. Like, yep. Yeah. yeah. So I played him in New York, and you know he's, okay. he's the same height as us. He's six six, but he's slim like me. Right. You know where, where okay. I feel like I'm small, but I'm not. I'm not as small as I think I am, but anyway, right. he was quick. He could move just like me. He was super athletic, and it and it mm-hmm. blew my mind because you know I was like, I was like, yo man, this this dude is like a white version of me, you know? Right. But you know, I think he was. Yeah. I think he was born in Paris. I know he's. I, yeah. I know he's. He's. He's from Europe, but uh, you know, he, he was born in Paris and raised in in uh L.A. But uh, mm-hmm. L.A. is home. And matter of fact, I spoke to him uh the other day. I was talking to my man Simply Farnell. Um, okay. You know, and uh, we was on the chat because I'm supposed to go check them boys out in, um, in L.A. Uh, this summer. OK, and nice. Go out there and go nice. see some of the guys, some of the people. And, you know, people telling me, hey, you need to go see this person. You need to go see this person. Because only right. one is coming from the east to the west for yep. the first time to say, what's up? You know, link up nice. with guys. Nice. And because uh, it's important, man, because I know I haven't said it yet. But, you know, Nomad Hoops, man, is about, you know, about connecting with people getting out and, and all over with others to to hoop and, and unite man because you know you got nomads that have no home or whatever they just live right. and they travel from place to place now nomad hooper they they travel from court to court and they have no home court you know what I'm saying they have no home right. court so right that's that's what nomad hoops is all about man and, and giving the notoriety to players that don't get the opportunity or the chance to you know really get seen in the public's eye like you obviously right. are sitting here on a DVD. Zobie <laughs> one, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, but but just because you're sitting here on this, like, I got I got younger viewers that are going to see this that I know personally. Gonna be like, yo, Zo, like, that's crazy. Like, you you know this guy? I'm like, I mean, well, technically, right. I knew of him, but now you know it's like like I look at him. He's he's like my big OG. You know what I mean? I got a lot of mm-hmm. y'all. You know, and the fact that right, we have right. Instagram and all the stuff that we have today to be able to do yeah. this is amazing. It's right. great. Like one day I was just sitting there chilling. I was like. I was going through my um like my videos and stuff when I was you know kind of yeah. starting this up and I was like man like who would be interested on in being in this or whatever so, and I turned around I was like man, let me let me see where this guy's at so I started right. googling using my using my nine to five skill set to start finding yeah. people that's what makes it special mm-hmm. too because I can find people that that people people that don't want to be found not not saying that wasn't you right. but you're not right. you're not really heavy on social media neither. You know, because mm-hmm. I actually sent, you know, I sent a, a message to you a month before you responded, you know. Right. And but that was because, you know, you was in between travel and all that stuff. But yeah, exactly. The fact that exactly. we have it, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's like, yo, like and now here we are, you know, right. talking, you know, face to face, you know, and it's it's, right. it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's just it's, it's dope, man. I got a I got another video up here. This is this right here is. uh Somebody took okay, so so something called cyberdunk.com or whatever. This is on YouTube, right? You know, you know it says cyberdunk one on one. I guess it was a a um, 
uh, a one-on-one tournament. This wasn't you playing in it or anything like that. But right. what they did was they took the Nike Battleground uh, DVD and they like cut it up and they mm-hmm. made like a right. commercial right. out of it. Um, mm-hmm. And th- I wanted something to be able to show you in okay. the battlegrounds. So you gotcha. know, I ain't worried about whatever happens here. I'm just making sure it's all yeah. seen where, I, where I'm pulling this from. So anybody right. want right. to say, yeah, they can just like, hey, this guy right here. You know what I'm saying? I know they say stop snitching, yep. but hey, I didn't do it. So don't come after <laughs> right. no mad hoops, bro. They only got one subscribe anyway, so I don't think anybody's worried about that. Um, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, and this, it was interesting because I think, uh, I want to say my uh, parents had stumbled across this. And they asked if I knew, you know, anything about Cyberdunk or anything. I had no idea. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm, I'm going to skip through it because I ain't about to, we ain't about to watch all this. I just wanted to right. show See, as you coming in, young you. Yeah. Yeah. Straight, straight out of college, you. Well, probably about like two nah, years. Nah, yeah, two years. Yeah, I've been out for two years at that point. Yeah, see, they're showing a whole bunch of stuff. We ain't, going, they ain't getting all that. We've seen these buckets. Right. But but I like I like what they did. I mean, they did cut it up, and they showed, like, the good and the bad, you know, the, the being tough yeah. and, and everything. See, and, and Yeah, I and, mean uh, – yeah, go ahead. You got it. No, I mean, I, I thought it, you know, I thought that, you know, how they put it together was, you know, pretty slick, to be honest, you know, just with how they, you know, just kind of cut and pasted everything. Mm-hmm. Right. Because the agents talking about, and this right here was like, this is stuff that's in the actual DVD, which is crazy. Like, you could tell when a player got tired, because that's when they started really right. holding. And it was just right. like, well, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you score. So then the next tactic was, I'm going to, I'm going to try to run the clock out by just holding you and you not scoring anymore. And so like, if right. you, so, you know, let's say, let's say I score seven points and you score five points. Right. And then it's just like, or the opposite way around since I'm interviewing you, you score, you score seven points and I score five points. And I'm like, okay, I can't let him score no more because I think I can possibly stop him from scoring any right. more buckets. And uh, right, switch that out of there from scoring any more buckets. And I feel like I can score again before the time is up. But yet there's like five minutes left. I mean, that's a long time. Right. <laughs> that's a long time to try to contain well, somebody by just fouling. But the, but the other thing you got to remember is we had a 10 second shot clock. Right. That's right. There was a 10 yeah, second shot. You know, so, so it wasn't like you could just, you know, go ahead and just stall out, you know, for that five minutes. So, I mean, you, you had to do whatever. And my, my thing was going into the tournament was I, I ended up priding myself. And I still pride myself on being in great shape. You know, so yeah. I knew it was always going to be, you know, um, you know, a bit of a sprint mm-hmm. but at the same time, you know, an, an eight minute long game at the same time, you know, it's, it's a long time. You know, so, when it's just one on one and you're, you know, and you got people, you know, hanging on you and everything else. So, I mean, you never had any type of break. So usually guys might be gassed, you know, after three minutes. I mean, I would be shoot. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I mean, to, to, to have somebody hanging on you, you know, the whole time, is is right. wild, you know, because you can't. There's nothing you can really do with that. I mean, right? It just they just they're hanging on you. So it, um, exactly. So so let me okay. So I'm, I want to double back right quick. You know, you played in the Big Ten. You played at Providence, right? Yeah, Big East. Yeah, I mean Big East. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I yeah. did say Big yeah. Ten. I'm wilding. Um, yeah. Okay, you played in the Big East. Now, when you played at Providence, was um was God Sham God at Providence when you were there? Sham left the year I came in. He was my host on uh, my visit, but I played with Jamel Thomas. Shout out 530, you know, from uh, Coney Island. So the, Sebastian Telfair's older brother. So, you know, I played with five yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Kareem Shabazz. Yeah. So I played with all those guys. Okay. So, so when you, when you came out and then you, uh, you know, two years went by, like, did you hear from any of those guys when you started playing in the battleground? Like when you, when they, when you came, did, did they start calling you like king? Like, did people in LA start nah. calling you like the king of LA? Like, out in like, or that's just like, just people like us. So, I mean, the the funny story about LA is I wasn't even playing in the five on five, you know, battlegrounds. So I got a call from um, uh, Rod Smith, and he was telling me about it. And um, yeah, I went ahead, got in the tournament, and being that I grew up grew up in the desert, 
you know, I was a suburb kid, you know, literally driving in. So I just went ahead, drove in, beat up on everybody, went back you know, to my house. So everybody was, you know, so some of my friends, you know, who, who I knew from, you know, junior high school, high school, who, you know, just doing the AAU things and all that kind of stuff, you know, they knew me. But there was also a lot of people who didn't know me, you know, especially being the fact that I went to, you know, college on the East Coast. So literally that first year, went ahead, played, won, and went back. Um, you know, as far as with New York, uh, Kareem, you know, he came down and I had a few friends from Providence who, um, you know, were at the games, um, you know, for that second year. But I mean, as far as King or anything like that, nah, I mean, everybody just knows me as E or E Max from school. And so, you know, that was it. But after the battlegrounds had actually come out and it had aired, there's different places that I was, you know, getting recognized and people were, you know, calling me King and E money and all that kind of stuff. So just depending on where, where I played at, you know, and, uh, you know, what I've done, you know, different places, I have different nicknames. So if people shout, shout out and call me E-Money, they know me from, you know, from the battlegrounds. If it's E-Max, they know me from school. If it's, you know, just E, then they know me, you know, back from, you know, SoCal. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. Yo, that's what I was going to say, man. I saw, um, I saw a, uh, let's go, hold on, I got to go back to that, to that video, man. That's what it was, man. At the bottom of this video, bro, I'm going to bring it up so people mm -hmm. can see or whatever. At the bottom of this video, in the comments, yo, I thought it was funny, bro. So you dunked on some dude named Carl Skinner in eighth grade. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that joint, that joint say, that joint says, uh, you know what I'm saying? He came from one side of the court. He beat you to the spot or whatnot. And then when you got to the dotted line, you know, he prepared to take the charge. My favorite part about the whole thing is that in parentheses, it says that he braced himself for contact as he put both hands on his groin area. So he just knew he was about to take this charge, yo. And then it says, right. Uh, but to, but to no avail. Okay. The only thing that, that Carl ended up taking was Aaron's Paul's groin to his face as Aaron jumped over him and dunked <laughs> on him. And then the joint says, eighth grade, y'all. So, and this is from somebody, PGBD, six years ago. So whoever it is, they grew up with you, man, or they was they was there. They was there. They saw this happen, bro. So that joint was wild to read that. That, that is funny. That's, that's that is really like, funny. That goes to show, like, you never know – who you make an impact on in life. You never know what people remember. And, you know, for right. life, uh, you know, for life, uh, you know, PGB, uh, BD is always going to remember that you banged on uh, Carl Skinner. Right. So, right. you know, it, I mean, you obviously know the name Carl Skinner. So this must have been. No, I, I honestly don't. I, I no. honestly don't. I have no, I have no idea who Carl Skinner is. And the other thing is the the only BD that I know is, is you know B Diddy Baron Davis because you know we played you know growing up together, right? So, so I mean unless you know it was something where because I I don't because I'm trying to think right now I don't think that uh, BD and I were playing together at that point because you know we we knew each other but we didn't start playing together mm -hmm. until I want to say like my so our sophomore year of high school. Okay. So you know. Whoever you know wait, this wait, is, wait, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Okay, y'all was yeah. Wait, y'all was playing together sophomore. Okay, so you played with Baron Davis. Yeah, on AAU team. AAU. Yeah, a yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, yo, okay. BD, yo, Bad Santa, Kenny Bruner, shout out KB. You know, I talk to KB all the time. Um, you know, KB was uh -huh. one of my PGs. You know, in high school. You know, um, you know, playing AAU stuff. Um, tough, you know, man. you know the great Shea Cotton. You know, we all know who Shea was. You know, yeah. before. You know, went ahead, you know, Shea was, you know, one of the guys, you know, from, from the crib who used to hoop. So, I mean, we all played either with or against each other at different times throughout, you know, our high school career. But, I mean, everybody knows everybody. You know, Shea has his docu coming out. Um, you know, shout out to Shea Cotton. But, um, you know, that's just what it was. You know, Jaron Jason Collins, you know, we played the, played together. Yeah. What's the um the the name of um... – of uh Shea Cotton's uh docu you know do you know the name of Shea Cotton's documentary that's supposed to be Yeah, it's out? it's called it's called it's called uh Manchild. And he he's on Instagram. I'm sure you know you can go ahead and you know reach out to him, you know whatnot, but um oh, yeah, you know, I know he's fine. done some, oh, you know, he some stuff with that. 
Oh yeah, he about to he about to get this link. So. He about to get this link right here, bro. And and after that, he, I'm going to have to have him on here, bro, so he can talk about it. Oh, uh, people that don't know who Shea Cotton is, man. Shea Cotton is is one of the people right now uh, that's that's comparable to um, he's he. Okay, so the, the documentary is called Man Child, right? So yeah. Shea Cotton yeah. is is built like he's before. LeBron and obviously He's, Zion. Yeah. So there's a couple of people right. that that fit in that category of like they people talk about legendary players that um uh, that fit that mold that didn't make it or mm-hmm. didn't didn't go you know all the way through right or whatnot. And Shea Cotton is one of those individuals. Um, you know, so it's like it's like kind of like how they talk about Lynn Bias, except you know, right? Shea Cotton is here to talk, you know, and Lynn Bias mm-hmm. is not here, right? In but, yeah. Right, everybody passed, so you know everybody has to talk for this individual. Where it's like, right. you know, Michael Jordan has talked about Lynn Bias and said, "Yo, like he's like the toughest, mm-hmm. like he's like the greatest that he's ever like seen in person." There's documentaries, right, and, and, and stuff where he, you know, is said or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But like I said, man, there's there's so much to street ball, street basketball that you know that's right. where that's why we having all these stories. That's why that's why I wanted to do this because. um you know, a lot of my, a lot of some of the street ball players that are my buddies, you know, like um, the Intimidator uh, from Unprotected Hoops, right. he's, uh, he's from San Francisco mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, he yeah. calls me uh, Uncle Drew uh, of the street ball world because I've been, gotcha. you know, traveling or well, traveling around as a nomad on the internet right? and, uh, right. you know, linking up with cats and, and saying like, yo, what's up, man? Y'all want to come on? Y'all trying to yeah. get on the, get on the podcast? And everybody has been welcoming and and um and open to to jumping on man and i really appreciate it it lets me know that i'm doing something right mm, excuse me for, mm-hmm. for people, people to want to be on the platform um but uh but look man um uh, i'm not going like i said I, I know you block time off um is there anything is there anything that you want to talk about specifically man anything you want to you know uh get off your chest uh anything i mean you're, you're the one you know doing the interview i mean you know it, you know as as you put it the basketball community is so small you know, and the degree of separation between people is usually one to two, two individuals and that, and that's it. So, I mean, like I said, as far as with, you know, the Barons and, you know, the, you know, Kenny Bruners, the Shays, you know, myself, everybody, you know, we, we all grew up together. You know, we're all the same age, you know, we all played, you know, with and against each other. So, I mean, there was never any, you know, bad blood or anything like that. And we grew up in the days that, you know, just wanted to compete. You know, if if you're the best on the block today, you know, we're trying to knock you off today to see who, you know, gets to hold the title for tomorrow. You know, and that's just, you know, what the level of competition was. But um, I mean, you're you're the one doing the interview. So, I mean, I know you probably have a, a hundred million questions. So, I mean, feel free, you know, to ask. Oh, yeah, I got questions. I got questions. Let me ask you this one yeah. right here. You know, hypothetically, like if Nomad Hoops had a a. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm coming up with stuff off the top of my head right now. Like a legendary, mm-hmm. legendary one on one. It had to be called something like, like time machine. It had to be called like, like, like legendary time machine one on one tournament, right? Whereas mm-hmm. like yourself, like everybody that was like in the battlegrounds and and things of that nature. Like, would you play if it happened four years from now? Not right now, because you, you're obviously playing right now. But at 44 right. to 45 years old, do you think you would compete in something like that? Because, you know, everybody's body change. I'm going through body changes right now, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like, right. like, you know, it's just like you need to stretch more. You need to right. definitely stretch more. That's really it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, like if you was 45 and you could still go, would you put yourself in a tournament that is, it's, it's 45 is, it's, you know, you gotta be from 40, 40 and up like one-on-one right. tournament. Cause I have no, never I, seen one. I mean, I, I definitely play. And the thing about it is, is you have guys who are in great shape. I mean, look at Vince Carter. I mean, Vince is turning, you know, 43, you know, next season. And we all know what Vince still does. I mean, and, and it's really, right. you know, just your lifestyle and, and, and what you do. I mean, every like Travis Best. I mean, shout out to Travis Best and Antonio Davis because I see them you know on a regular basis and Smitty, you know. But you know, I'm I'm the young one in the crew, 
So a lot of times I ask them questions, you know, fig, you know, finding out the different, you know, regimens, the different things that they do. And, you, you know, you take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you put it into, you know, your lifestyle, seeing if it, you know, works out or not, if it works for you. So, I mean, talking to those guys and knowing, knowing them for, you know, literally the last, you know, 10 years, I've been able to learn a lot just as far as with, you know, the, the taking care of your body. And, you know, I was doing that even before, but, you know, just the little bits and pieces that, you know, they've been able to pick up and, you know, you just kind of, you know, you're just a sponge. You know, you just try to, you know, take whatever you can to, you know, be able to, you know, lengthen your career. And these are guys who, you know, mid forties, late forties, who are still in shapes and still get buckets. Facts. Facts. That's, that's hands down. You're right, man. They they definitely still getting buckets. Uh, I just I just want to be able to to run up down the court and you know <laughs> shoot the tray ball and like I, right okay if okay I put it like this if you could not okay out of all your skills that you have in basketball what mm -hmm. what skill would you want to keep if you lost all of the other ones I'd want to keep my mind. Hmm. Because your, your mind, regardless of what you lose, you can still think the game. You can still see the game. You can still get to your spot. Even if it's, you know, backing somebody down a la Magic Johnson, Mark, Mark Jackson style. If you can get to your spot, you know, you can go ahead and still shoot the ball. You know, you can still post up. I mean, you think about MJ. MJ started losing his athleticism, but he had his mind. Yeah, and that's still when he is playing with the Wizards those last few years. That's why he still dominated. You know, what didn't jump as high, you know, lost maybe a quarter of a step. But the fact that he had that experience, you know, that's why he was still so tough to play against. Man, that's that's a tough answer, bro. Cause you definitely just hit me with some OG answer. And I'm sitting here thinking in my head, physical attributes, and you just hit me with the mind, and I'm like, I'm like, yo, he's right. Like, it don't matter what you lose. As long as you got this up here, you can always do right. what you've always done. It's just you're not going to be able to do it physically to a maximum capacity. So, you right. know, I would never again, you know, take off from, from almost the free throw line. Never. Like, I, I just physically right. can't. I just can't, right. you know. I got I got photos of me, like, flying through the air. You know, those days are done, mm -hmm. you know. But I can still hit you with that, that boom, boom, you know, turn, pull up. Right, Easy, come down, pull up, you know, hit you with that one, two, you know, side step, pull up, exactly, you know, come right. up off the screen, go to the basket, you know, left hand, right hand, yeah. certain things you can do. It may not be as fast right. anymore, but it's only as fast as uh, whoever you're playing against. You know, if you're playing like, like, if right. I'm playing against the youth, if I'm playing against guys 23, 24, like, mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, these dudes are definitely gonna be right there on my hip, you know, they're 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 actually moving right. slow because. It's kind of like when you run against somebody, you run it right beside them. Yeah. You tend to run yep. the same speed, but they're right. really way faster than you, possibly, or you're way faster yeah. than them. So yeah. because um, I played against I played against a couple of guys that are um uh, that were, you know, going to they were trying to get drafted this year or whatnot. And just just gotcha. playing with them, watching how they run up down the court. I'm able to run up down the court with them and uh, you know, just just get it. And you know, I, I sat and I watched um, you know. You know, lead scorer in NCAA. Uh, you know, Chris Clemens. I watched Chris, oh, Chris yeah, Clemens. Yeah. yeah, you know, he 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 comes to our gym or whatever. I watched okay. him. You know, he's got crazy bounce. Short dude, man. Short dude, yeah. crazy bounce. Great pull up. You know, uh, there's a video. Mm -hmm. There's a video on IG where he's um he's uh doing shooting drills or whatever. And he misses like the first like two, three or whatever. Like like. Yeah consistently or whatever and then right. all of a sudden it just i call it i call it unlimited ammo when i'm shooting or whatever i just keep right. I always keep shooting right. unlimited ammo because that's shoot or yeah. shoot so you right know, right of course he just turned around he started going back and forth he's like boom and he's going through boom 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 all of a sudden they just start hitting the bullseye bam 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 right, right after the next right and uh you know that's that's tough man but uh let's see man what else we got here yo um not gonna put you out there on the spot like that like i said but um, how far out are you from coming back to the States for good? I mean, that, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know if it's so much the, the years. I mean, I still feel it in my body that you know, I have, you know, a handful of years left. I mean, I probably have, 
you know, three, four years left. But, um, you know, really it just comes down to that transitional period. I mean, you know, you walk into places, for example, and people know of your pedigree. They know the knowledge that you have with you. And, you know, for some coaches, that is intimidating. You know, um, other coaches, you know, they go ahead and they use that, you know, to their advantage because you're an extension of, you know, what they do. But, um, you know, every place, you know, they, they know that if you're able to go ahead, you know, keep yourself in shape, you know, you're you know, not a problem. And like I said, you're an extension of a coach because that's kind of the, the transition for me is I'd like to go from hoofing to coaching. So, you know, you have that knowledge, you spend time with different coaches and, you know, you continue to learn the game. If you're, you know, underneath the coach, depending on the situation, as we know, being overqualified for a position, that actually happens as a player because at the end of the day, they can't control you. They can't threaten you. You may know more. And rather than being in the boat of saying, hey, you know what, we're all on the ship together. We win together. We lose together. It comes down to ego. And you have people who ego trip on things. So understanding the game, seeing how that kind of stuff, you know, goes on. I mean, it is what it is. But you know, at the end of the day, it's just looking at being able to transition. And, you know, if there's a great opportunity, because I'd like to be able to, you know, coach abroad versus necessarily doing like NCAA or anything like that. Um, you know, if the opportunity comes up and it's actually a good situation, then that would be you know, the transition. Uh, that's, a, that's a good answer, too. Um, I see that just just how you speak on the game itself, you know, you know, being not only a, a, a professional basketball player, but, you know, you've played on many levels and then. Um, like you've played, you've played, you played pickup ball, which is street ball growing up. Mm -hmm. And then you, we all play this in order to get to make our high school, junior high school or middle school teams or whatnot to then mm -hmm. try to go to college and play out there. And then, you know, in your transition in between, you know, you just, you always hoop wherever you can hoop in order to get the, right. good, get the good run. And the best run is right. everybody, everybody that's a hooper, knows the best run is the summer run right hands down like i don't mm -hmm. care if you're talking about the nba i don't care if you're talking about you know whatever like the best right. run is summer run because mm -hmm. teams are mixed uh you don't know you don't know who's going to be on your team you know people stack teams and then right. sometimes, you know, the team gets stacked, but you're playing against another stacked team. So is it technically stacked? Mm -hmm. Nope. It's an even no. team now. So, yeah, exactly. So now it comes down to, okay, now let's see how good you really are. Because, right. you know, you don't went and got these the, – you, you, got, you, got the you got the top ten players or whatever, like, in mm -hmm. the world. If you take the top right. ten players in the world and you, and you mix them up and you take one, three, five, and you just break it down and you, you separate them, or whatever, right. and put them together right. like that. So now you got mm -hmm. number one and then number two, then number three and then number four. So now it's still going to be right. even coming down, but mm -hmm. they're going to be they're going to be better than one another in a certain category somewhere. So the question is, is like, right? How good are you really? You that, that's exactly what it is. But but as you know, as a hoop head, that's how you go ahead and you you gauge your game. You know, you you hear about this guy from over here, this guy over there or you just don't even know who the person is mm -hmm. but you know if i'm trying to get better i gotta find that run where i'm gonna be challenged it's gonna be enjoyable i'm gonna be able to compete at the end of the day i'm gonna feel like i got something out of it that's right that's right i gotta yeah you gotta get something there you, you have to feel like you got something out of it you definitely will if you're playing you know top-notch competition like that like hey, right i mean it's, it's no way around it so um man aaron yo like <laughs> I, like I said, man, I, I don't remember if I said this in the beginning. I know I said this before we got on, man. But, you know, to everybody out there in the Nomad Hoops community, I want to first of all thank everybody that's come out and everybody that's been watching us today, you know, from, from the beginning of this conversation to where we're at now. Uh, everybody that's been rocking with, you know, Nomad Hoops and, you know, myself, Zobi One, Kenobi, you know, uh, like it really means a lot. I tell y'all this all the time because it does. And it's important that I let people know that. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it means a whole lot that, you know, people take time out to come and listen to me talk to individuals that that mean a lot to me. 
you know, they mean a lot to other people, but they mean a lot to me. Mm-hmm. Just because somebody isn't here on my show doesn't mean right. they don't mean a lot to me. It just mean that they just haven't came on the show yet. Or, right. you know, they just don't know that they mean that much to me because they haven't checked their IGs. So if you look in, mm-hmm. <laughs> check, yep. your, check your, your IG, and if you see Zobi one in there, you know, or even reach out to me, man. Like, I'm tangible. That's what street ball is about, too, man. It's about being tangible. Right. Like, you can't right. reach out and touch LeBron. You can't you can't reach out right. and touch, you know, um, you know, Steph or or or, or any of those guys. You, you can't like, you right. know, you, you get in trouble for for yelling. You know, if you, you close enough and you yelling loud enough, you know, they turn right. around and say, hey, man, get that guy out of here. It's like technically right. that's not that's not basketball. That's not street ball at all, bro. Right. You know what I mean? If you right. can, if you can if you can bypass people screaming while you shooting a free throw, you can't worry about something yeah. somebody says because you're not supposed to even be paying attention to social media. In, in that aspect, right. people say all kinds of nasty things. You know, so right. Uh, but I mean, but that's the difference between you know you and I, and again, a lot of the new generation. You know, they they have their feelings all over the internet. They didn't like what somebody said. They didn't like you know and. I know just as far as growing up, there are certain guys I got along with, certain guys I didn't get along with, and I wasn't going to fake it. You know, if, if, I did, if I didn't like you, for example, I wasn't going to bad mouth you the newspaper. You know, if somebody asked me, oh, yeah, you know, Zoe, he hoops. You know, he's a competitor. There was that respect, but at the same time, it's like, if I don't like you, I don't have to go ahead and put you down or anything like that. And everybody may know we don't get along. We ain't cool. You know, that's it. But, you know, these guys nowadays, what do they do? I don't compete against you hard enough on the court. You know, nobody can say anything to me. And if I'm upset, I'm going to sit behind my phone or my tablet or my computer, and I'm going to talk my trash, and I'm going to troll you. And I'm going to get my feelings about, oh, you know, so Zoe's talking bad about me. He went ahead and said this. He, you know, guys need to grow up. But as mm-hmm. you said it, though, you know, with a lot of those guys, um, you know, just in general in the league, they're not, they're not real. And when I say not real, people don't have an opportunity to actually come into contact with them, you know, and actually be able to interact. I actually had this conversation the other day with, uh, with Corey homicide Williams, shout out homicide. Oh, and, that's uh, the dude and Kenny right Bruner. there, man. I can't forget. I can't forget yeah. forgot about them. Yeah. That's the dude right there, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my guys. But you know, we, you know, we did have, you know, conversations just as far as with being real within the community, you know, and when I'm saying the community, I'm talking about anybody who comes and watches you play whether it's professionally, whether it's, you know, out at the parks, you know, street ball type stuff, you know, whatever tournaments, but being able to dap people up, those are the things that they remember. Hey, he went ahead, he dapped me up. Hey, he gave me, you know, one of his t-shirts, you know, he gave me a shorts, you know, whatever it is, you know, you're giving back to the fans, the people who come out and support you, the people who show you love. And that's why you get, get those hood passes. Right. right. You know, depending right. on where you go, like when, when, for example, when I went ahead and won the battlegrounds, I'd gone back to New York about a week later, catching up with some friends. And, you know, people were there at the Battlegrounds tournament. And even though I was in, um, I believe I was over in uh, Far Rockaway, Queens, because I was going to see, see my man Kareem Shabazz, you know, people went ahead and like, hey, you know, you, you won the Battlegrounds, blah, blah, blah. And they're just like, no, you're all good. You know, there's no problems here. It's all love. We saw how you gave love to Junie. You guys were cool. You know, go ahead. Anytime you're here, you're, you're welcome. And that's just, you know, how it works. When people see the respect, they see the love and the respect for the game on top of that, people give you respect. I mean, and you know that just from all the different movies we've seen, you know, whether it's, you know, gang members who, you know, run up on people and say, oh, you know, we know who this guy is, you know, let him ride. You know, he, he's not about that life. You know, let him go. You know, so you get that respect. I mean, no matter, you know, what it is. I mean, even if it's, you know, situations with law enforcement or whatever, you know, people go ahead, recognize, and, you know, go ahead and let you slide. And that's, that's if, I really believe if you do the game the way that it's supposed to be done, you know, you get so much back in return. It may not necessarily be the monetary side of things, but you get so much in return. And that's, you know, that's some of the stuff that, you know, God blesses us with. That's right. That's right. Yo, shout out to, uh, shout out to Madness, yo, in the, uh, in the chat, man. He was, uh, he was on one, one of the, uh, earlier uh podcast back he just said that uh he got the dvd still also man so oh, you know okay you got, that's what's you up got, it's it's a it's a lot of and he's a um he's another street ball player or whatever you know but he came up 
in the same air. So so your air of street ball, my air of street ball are this are somewhat mm-hmm. similar, but they're not right. Mm-hmm. Because I came up in the in the trick air or whatever. So right. I right. came up in the air that that destroyed games. I'm gonna be real, it, it right. messed me up. Yeah. But um, you know, yeah. at the same time, it's like I can hold my own, but then it's just like, oh, I'm trying to I gotta do this, I gotta do that. So now I gotta now I'm right. here. So but it's cool. Yeah. Uh but yeah, he came up in the same air or whatever. He could play ball, but you know, there's a lot of us out there. Let me ask you this. So um what do you think about the generation now? I'm gonna call them, I need to come up with a, a name for that generation, like street ball, like generations or whatever, gotta have some type of name. Um, maybe like the oh <laughs> what's going on, B? Like everybody, everybody's starting to pop in now. Like, oh, like, oh my god, okay, whatever cool. That, that's been on and stuff. Now they they jumping in in the mm-hmm. chat or whatever, man. And uh, but okay, like I'm gonna call them like cradle. I'm, well, I can't call them okay. Yeah, I call them cradle rockers. So like the Jelly mm-hmm. Fam. I know you heard about the Jelly Fam. You know, Jelly yeah. like that layup that mm-hmm. that yeah. over exaggerated layup. Right. <laughs> right. I think it's I mean, beautiful. Yeah, every, I think it's beautiful. But, I mean, you know. it, it, it looks great. It looks great. I mean, I'm, I'm never going to knock anybody's hustle. Right. I mean, everybody ha- has their thing. I mean, it's just like, you know, I, I like, you know, I know a handful of the, the original and one guys. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you had those who could hoop. And then you had those who did tricks. Right. You know, and like I said, you, you do what you got to do to get your bread That's at right. the end of the day. That's right. You know, we know. And at the end, and with that being said, we know who can hoop. You know who can't, See. you know, and that's just you know what it is. I mean, if I got to go ahead and say I need a need a point guard, I'm looking at you know bad Santa Kenny, you know Kenny Bruner. I mean, on top of that, or you know going with homicide, mm-hmm. you know these are guys who, you know, do the street ball stuff, but they are pros. Mm-hmm. You know, and some guys, homicide. you know, that's you know that's just the difference. Mm-hmm. Homicide just retired not too long ago because he's he's I've seen him do like some broadcasting. Like, yeah, he's been okay. doing broadcasting for uh, for like the last three and a half years down in Australia. And, you know, we hooped against each other playing NBL as well. You know, so, I mean, he, he's in a great situation down there, you know, just being able to, you know, just be be homicide on TV, you know, bring in, you know, knowledge, uh, a wealth of knowledge, being able to call people out as, as he would do, you know, yeah. any day of the week because he's a competitor and he wants to see people compete. So, I mean, he, he's a hot commodity, you know, down in, in Australia. I know uh, he has a, a huge fan base. But, you know, as a player, I mean, he's he's tough, you know, so, I mean, people need to you know make sure that, you know, they don't put, you know, disrespect him because, I mean, he'll still get out there and, and tell him, you know, you need to make sure you put some respect on my name. Mm-hmm. And that how... that's what I'm all about. Right. That's right. That's what he, he is. I mean, mm-hmm. they don't call him homicide for nothing, man. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, he's a killer out there, right. man. Like he's, he's the real deal. Um, I want to see how um, I'm going to definitely watch some of his his cast. Uh, when like Lamelo is is out, you know, because Lamelo going to Australia, right, right. So right, so I, I'm be I'm Yo, another Cali, another SoCal kid. Yep. Oh, there we go. He didn't drop down one more. He'll be back. He'll be back. So, uh, yeah, man, what's good in the chat, man? We're gonna go ahead and uh, get ready to wrap it up. But uh, you know, if y'all got anything to say in the chat? You know, go ahead and drop that right quick while he get ready to pop back in. And then, uh, you know, once he pops back in, we'll go ahead and get ready to sign off. Um, you know, we've been sitting here with uh, E Money or whatnot, man. That's what we. That's what I know him as in the in the battleground. He's tough, bro. Like, he's super tough, man. Like, I just want to put it out there right quick, man. Like, I don't really get too starstruck, but you know, when I first got on here and um, started talking to him, it was. It was unreal, you know. It was, it was unreal that I was talking to him the whole time. Okay. And uh, oh no, I know you back. I'm just talking to talking to everybody right now, real quick. And I'm yeah. just telling them about you know what I was mm-hmm. telling you earlier. You know, like being starstruck. Um, but you know, he's he's been he's been such an influence indirectly. You know, from from I mean, I keep pulling a DVD up. But, you know, like from from this DVD, like this this was the only way that I knew him was through this DVD. And to, and to watch it, like all of these players for the most part, you know, it was the only way that I knew them. And they indirectly taught a lot of us how to be tough or what tough should look like. 
even if people are holding or grabbing, what, what I noticed out of every last one of those players in that DVD is no one gave up. They were tired. They were dead tired. I mean, they get smacked up against a, a metal gate, you know, like a fence, you know, like they just no holds bar, yo, just just straight balling. Right, right, exactly, B. The generation is, is, is not flashy, you know, you know, and knocks the tricks, you know, but it's just, that's just, that's wild, man. But look, this is what we're going to do, E, man. I'm going to let you go ahead and shout out whoever you want to shout out, man. You know, whatever you want us to go check out. If you want to, you know, give, you want your social media out there or whatever, man, like, I'm definitely going to put that in the description so you don't have to really worry about, mm -hmm. you know, knowing what it is exactly and all that stuff, man. And, yeah. Um, you know, we'll go ahead and shut it down, man. Let you let you eat some breakfast, bro. You know, without the MSG. Um, nah, you know. nah. I mean, no no breakfast. I'm just going to the gym, hit these weights, and get this cardio in. I mean, man, it, it's, it's hey, it's tough at 40 years old. So, I mean, <laughs> you, you got to stay on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but you know, first first and foremost, you know, thanks for having me, you know, on on Nomad Hoops. I mean, I definitely you know really appreciate having the opportunity to you know spend time with you and just being able to talk, you know, uh, talk hoops. I mean, you know, that that's what we're about. That's what we're always going to be about. You know, to the day we die, I mean, hoops is always going to be a part of our life. So you know, mm -hmm. I appreciate you know being able to you know talk hoops with you. You know, definitely you know on top of that, you know, being able to shout out you know the SoCal guys who you know I grew up with, um, you know, with you know, the Kenny Bruners, the Shea Cottons, the, you know, the Baron Davises, the Tayshawn Princes and all those guys. I mean, we all grew up together, you know, all hooped together. Um, you know, whether, you know, we got in the league or we hooped overseas, I mean, everybody was doing their thing. I mean, Alex Carcamo, I mean, he, he's a legend, you know, played in the battlegrounds as well. Um, you know, played, you know, for Belize's national team, you know, Olin Simpis, you know, he's doing a lot of training out in LA, played for Belize's national team. Um, you know, so, I mean, the, the list goes on and on, you know, most spills as well, you know, played overseas, you know, plenty of years. Um, but, you know, on top of that, I mean, you know, the, the, the game is global, um, you know, as you put it, um, you know, with the battlegrounds, I mean, everybody just with the way we get you, we grew up, you never gave up, you gave it your all. And, and that's just, you know, what it is. And I mean, with, with hoops, I mean, whether, if you do the game the right way, not only does it help you on the court, but also helps you in life, you know, not giving up, you know, giving it your all. And at the end of the day, as long as you give your all, you can deal with failure. Right. Because you know what, what, what you went ahead and you invested into being able to try to succeed the best way possible. And as I always tell people, 85% you can control, 15 you can't, 15, that's the politics of the game. Man, that's crazy, bro, man. I've been saying that for the longest, yo, and I ain't never heard no one else say it. Like you said it exactly the way I said it. I'm like, yo, 85%. I say it like this. I say 85% of life is, you know, controllable. And then I say the other 15% right. is nothing you can do about it, man. And that's exactly right. spot on, man. God, that's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, that's something that, you know, I, I believe in. It's true. And, I mean, if, if we just talk about hoops, you can do the skill training. You can do the conditioning. You can do the IQ building. You know, you can do all that kind of stuff, but you, you can't control what people are looking for. You don't know if there's favors for favors. You don't know, you know, whatever else is going on behind the scene. But you can determine how you show up and how you perform and the effort you give and the attitude that you give as well. Man, that's, that's, that's right, bro. That's right, man. You got anything you want to yeah. sign off with other than that, man? You know, anything. I mean, other than, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, uh, you know, definitely, you know, go ahead, reach out to, you know, some of those guys, you know, who, uh, you know, I told you about, I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure, you know, they would love to be able to come on, you know, be a part of the show. Um, you know, just being able to tell their tale as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean there, there's the reason why, you know, guys not only play street ball, but they're also having, you know, long careers as players. I mean, myself, you know, 17, 18 years, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, you know, so it, it's right. a blessing, right, man. It, you're right. It's definitely a blessing. Look, like shout out to the chat, man. Thank everybody that came out, everybody that was in there talking, hey, man, you know, no man hoops, man. Y'all all no man hoopers to me, bro. Like whether you get buckets or you don't get buckets, if you like the game, you're still a mm -hmm. no man hooper, yo. Like you can, you can love the game and be at the park just as often as the actual player. You're a hooper. You know, exactly. You, 
you may not you may not be you know good or great you know but if you get buckets you only have to get buckets i keep saying it because i get buckets let me let me stop saying that because mm-hmm. everybody's not me so everybody don't get buckets but right if you go to the court and you're working on your game and you're trying to do what you can do to become better you're a hooper man like you're a hooper exactly hands exactly. down you're a hooper because there's somebody out there that's definitely better than me. There's somebody out there that's mm-hmm. better than Aaron. There's somebody out there that's yep. better than everybody that he mentioned, you know, in the podcast. And there's people out there that's better than people that I've mentioned, people that I know. You know, there's somebody right. out there. Somebody. Right. You know, regardless of what the what the conversations are and who's the best and who's number one and all that stuff. Yeah, people are number one in certain generations at certain times. And then there will always be someone right. else that will be number right. one. You know, right. like I said. I also want to – on top of that, I also want to shout out, you know, all the people who, you know, put up with our nonsense when, when we hoop, whether it's rebounding, listening to us complain, you know, whatever it is, you know, our family members, you know, the wives, the girlfriends, you know, the, the best friends, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, they, they're hoopers as well because, you know, they're, they're, you know, the behind the scenes, you know, side of things that, you know, people never see, you know, they don't get enough respect or anything like that. So, you know, I definitely, you know, want to go ahead and give them a shout out as well because, I mean, you know, we have, you know, we all have that one friend who couldn't hoop, but like yep. you said, is a hooper, knowledgeable on the game, and they're the one who helps us get our shot right. They're the one who helps us get our handle right. They're the one who, who rebounds for us when we got, you know, we're taking 2,000 shots. Yep. So shout out to all those people as well. Like I said, the behind the scenes crew and, uh, you know, especially, you know, to my folks, because I mean, my folks definitely, you know, put up with my nonsense. They still put up with my nonsense, you know, hooping. But, um, you know, if, if it wasn't for, you know, my parents and my, and my brothers and whatnot, you know, I know I wouldn't be the person that I am today, you know, with, um, you know, the family commitment that we made, you know, to each other. Because, I mean, you know, we drive all over Southern California hooping, playing, and, you know, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, my old man, you know, told me, and, uh, you know, I was, in, I was about 14 years old, and we were commuting from 29 Palms, which is way out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, to uh, the Fullerton to play. So it's about a four-hour ride one way of playing in two two different tournaments. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my old man and my mom, they went ahead, drove drove me back and forth. They were sleeping in the back of our uh, pickup truck because we had a camper shell on it. You know, so they you know, they go ahead, sleep in the back. And like I said, this was family commitment, commitment. But I just remember my dad saying to me, you know, I'll go ahead, drive you wherever, you know, as long as you don't bullshit me and you give me 100%. And, you know, I, I've never, you know, forgotten those words. You know, and, you know, excuse me, people, you know, all that stuff for the foul language. But, you know, but that's the truth. I mean, it went ahead. It stuck with me. And, you know, I love my old man for that because, I mean, that is, you know, what commitment is to your family. That's commitment to, you know, your kids. You know, and that's, you know, also me saying, you know, I got to commit to myself. If I'm going to do this, then I got to go ahead and go 100 percent because you can't fake the funk. That's right. you know, we, we all know when people are going through the motions. So you know, I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there. That's right, man. That's. That's a fact, man. <laughs> That's a fact. But look, I want everybody to know once again, thank you for tuning in. Hit me up on IG, you know what I'm saying? Like, comment, subscribe. You know, that's what that's what all the YouTubers say. You know, I get it. I understand. Mm-hmm. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on uh Nomad Hoops here on the YouTube page. Follow me at uh right. Zobi1 on uh Instagram. And then uh you know, basically, y'all know how it works, man. I'm Zobi One Kenobi. Don't act like you don't know me. You know me, Zobi. Right. Yo, man. My man Aaron, yo. We out. Hey, peace. <laughs>